You're watching Pat Plays. It's time for another episode of Coffee and Nostalgia, and today I wanted to do a little bit of show and tell. I recently shot the intro for the Pat to the Past series, and this intro included a lot of cameras which I've used in the past, and some that I just have as part of my collection. So, whilst I've got all of these guys out of storage, I thought that I'd take this opportunity to go through all of the cameras that I own, whether I've used them or I just have them as display pieces. So to start with, let's go really far back in time now and look at some cameras which I obviously have never ever used. Uh, these were all just bought as collectibles and things to hopefully display in a potential future studio or office space. I couldn't really tell you anything about these cameras. I don't know what year any of them are from, but I think they're all really cool. I love the mechanics of them. And every time I see one in a vintage shop or an antique store, I always pick one up if I think that it looks cool or if it catches my eye. So now we're gonna quickly move into video cameras and we're gonna take a look at two Super 8 film cameras, which were my granddad's. So my granddad was really into his videography and he was always buying the latest cameras to shoot all his home movies. So first up, we have this Plusmatic Super 8 camera. This is a little battery powered Super 8 film camera. As you can see there, if we open up on the side, that right there, that is where the Super 8 film would go in. And then the little button there on the bottom, that is what you would click and hold and then the film would spin inside and it would capture everything that you're pointing it at. Next up we have this big guy here called the Elmo Super 110. This is another Super 8 film camera. This thing is a much bigger improvement on that Plusmatic Super 8 and it weighs an absolute ton. So the main difference between the previous camera and this one is that this actually has a zoom on the lens so you could actually zoom in and out whilst you were filming and then on the front there that's your focus ring so you could focus it yourself too. Another cool thing to know about this camera with it being battery powered is that right there on the side there's a little button that you could push up and down and it actually had an electronic zoom so rather than doing that manually with your hand you could just press that up and it would slowly turn the motor and zoom for you. And again, this one has that handle with the uh, little trigger at the bottom, which you'd hold in for it to start recording. And I'm really glad that I actually managed to get hold of this camcorder because this is the camera which my granddad used to film my mum and dad's wedding. Another cool thing that I noticed about this camera is that you can see that is where you would insert the film. And this actually still has some Kodachrome 40 movie film inside it. So I have no idea what's actually on this, but I think it'd be really cool to get this developed and find out what the last thing this camera filmed was. Next up, we have another photography camera. Uh, this is an Olympus OM10 uh, SLR camera. And I believe this was my auntie's. I found it inside its original Olympus bag and inside there was the receipt from Woolworths from 1991 which is when I was born and this is also the same type of camera that my mum would use all the time when we were kids. So as the years went on uh, my granddad began moving away from Super 8 film and started using VHS camcorders and Hi8 video cameras which brings us on to this Sony Video 8 Handycam. Now this actually wasn't my granddad's but it is the exact type of camera which he used used to have when I was a little kid and he filmed all the home movies on it. So I've got things such as my very first birthday, first Christmas, tons of stuff like that that was all filmed on one of these camcorders. And the reason that I purchased this one was so that I at least had something that resembled one of my oldest memories of a camcorder. So if it wasn't for my granddad being into videography and camcorders, I might never have got into it myself. So one of the first cameras that I did use when I started making films with my friends was actually one of my friend's cameras, which I would borrow, which was a Canon mini DV camera, which unfortunately I don't have here to show you but I did use it to make films such as Worms, which I've shown you previously. That would then bring us on to 2004, when I started making films with my friend Matt Pritchard and his younger brothers, and we would use his digital camcorder. Yep, this right here, the Vivitar SD MPEG-4 Digital Video Recorder. And as you can see, uh, 
this thing has seen some better days. The screen, I remember, completely fell off and was just hanging by the copper wires. So that had to be molded on there with that blue tack. And then it was secured in place with this sellotape, which has since rotted away. As you can see there, we've got 2004 to 2006. And during those years, we would primarily use this camera to make our movies. And we'd film absolutely all sorts on this. Mostly backyard wrestling, jumping into bushes and pretending we were on jackass. And we also made the Scream Again trilogy of films using mainly this camera. And I couldn't keep borrowing it all the time to make my movies. So finally, I ended up asking for one for Christmas. And what I got was this little digital camcorder right here. This is the Nisys. Nisys DV6 digital video camcorder. As you can see there, this was uh, used from 2005 to 2007. So Matt's camera, I think, would shoot at a max of maybe 360p, and it was in a four by three square aspect ratio. And this guy would shoot at 480p, but again, it was still in that four by three square aspect ratio. We hadn't quite moved into widescreen just yet. So this again would mainly be used for filming our own backyard wrestling matches. I think it was used for the third Scream Again film, at least some of it anyway. I did shoot the Michael Shaw using this, and I believe I shot some of my first ever horror fan films using this camera as well. Next up, we have this little guy, Disgo. Um, not much to say about this, it's pretty self-explanatory because I've written it right there on the back. I bought it in 2008, never used crap. Look at it, you've got your on button there at the top, a record button, and that's about it. And uh, yeah, imagine the worst ever early camera phone footage you can think of. And this guy was worse than that. So next up, in 2008, we finally moved into the 16x9 widescreen club. And that was with this camera right here, the Panasonic SDR S7. And this is one of my all time favorite cameras which I've ever owned and ever used. I absolutely loved this thing. I always wanted to be out using this camera and making films. And it's probably why during its lifetime of 2008 to 2009, I made so many different video projects. So most notably, this was the Foster's Boy and Carling Kid camera. Uh, I filmed the whole trilogy on here. I filmed the first ever Ghost Hunters on this camera camera and some of the second Ghost Hunters film on this. I filmed a ton of different horror fan films using this camera, including most of the ones that I've shown you so far. And it even filmed the very first Patanaki videos that we ever made. So we still weren't into the realms of HD just yet. It didn't even shoot 720p. This shot 480p, but like I said, it was in that 16 by nine widescreen format. So next up we have the 2009 to 2010 camera, which was this Samsung SMX F30B just rolls right off the tongue. So this was another digital camcorder which shot 16x9 widescreen and unfortunately it still shot in 480p but it gave a much better and much clearer image than the previous camera. So this is another one of my absolute favourite cameras that I ever owned and it got used in so many different projects. How I thought of the other camera as the Foster's Boy and Carling Kid camera, I like to think of this one as the Ghost Hunters camera as three of the Ghost Hunters films were filmed on this little guy. Other notable mentions would be Grugel, the very first Grugel film we shot on this, and we also filmed Alpha Wolf on this too in 2010. So 2010 really was the year of making films for me because we also shot The Merc that year. And I always remember that because I really wanted to get some really wide distorted shots in that. So I remember I would use this weird wide angle lens adapter and just duct tape it to the front of this camera. And that is how I would get wide angle shots using this camera. So this guy got most of its use in 2010. The next camera that I bought would be used in 2010 and 2011, and it was my first ever jump into high definition. That was with this Samsung HD point and shoot camera. So this guy, as you can see, has a completely different form factor to the previous cameras. It has a fixed lens without any zoom, no fancy flip out screen or a decent way to grip the thing. But what it did have going for it is that it shot in 1080p. So 2011 was the year where me and Aki began filming a 
lot of Patanaki music video parodies and sketches as it was really the year when the Patanaki channel started. Pretty much everything that was shot on this camera was a Patanaki sketch or video. So yeah, it shot in 1080p HD, which was great. But the downside to this guy was the fact that it only had three settings for the exposure and the lowest one was way too dark and the medium one was way too bright. I would always have to have it on the medium setting. But if you go to the Patanaki channel and watch any of the videos that we made using this thing in 2011, they're all super blown out and really bright and white, but there was nothing we could do about it. So we also shot the very first campus patrol using this camera where we saw Joe Mountain for the first time. And we also used this camera to shoot the sequel to Grugle, Grugle 2 Rebirth. Because I mean, come on, the original was in 480p. Of course, we're gonna film the sequel in 1080p HD. We also shot the balloon and the window cleaner using this camera, but it was another one of those situations where for some reason, I really wanted to use wide angle shots in that. So again, I got one of these wide angle lenses literally kept hold of it whilst I was filming like that and just filmed everything whilst holding the wide angle lens in front of it. Next up on the list, we have a camera that was only ever used once and that is this Pentax KR DSLR camera. So this was the first time I ever used an interchangeable lens camera. So even though I had that other camera at the time during 2011 and I could shoot in 1080p, it wasn't very good in low light and we needed something that we could use to film the second series of a week and so even though this could only shoot in 720p which was still good for the time I decided to borrow this off my girlfriend Sammy because it was way better in that low light situation that we were filming in the next camera which I got would take me from 2012 through to 2014 and that was this right here, this Fujifilm Finepix S. And this was another camera that shot 1080p videos. So there wasn't any sort of big film projects which this camera was used for. During those years I just seemed to film lots of odd different things. We were still doing Patanaki so this was actually used to film a couple of Patanaki videos. I think we shot the Goat remix using this and we definitely shot Bane's nightmare using this camera and I also filmed most of the epic lunchtime videos using this camera too which was an epic mealtime parody which I am going to be showing you in some Pat to the Past episodes. So this guy was really simple to use it was pretty much another point and shoot camera it actually took really good photos so I took this with me in 2014 when me and Sammy traveled around America for two months so I used this to film and take photos while I was there. So that right there is really a big reason to keep this in my collection because I'm a nostalgic guy and that was a really big trip for us to go on. So for me this is the epic lunchtime and holiday camera. So the next camera that I got was in December of 2014 when I finally fully moved into the realm of DSLR cameras and of course like most people's first ever DSLRs I had to get a Canon and I got the Canon 700D. Now the lens that you can see on this camera right now, the Sigma 17-50 to zoom lens, this was actually a lens that me and Aki bought purposely for making videos for our channel because 2015 was the year where we really tried our best to release a new video every week and we pretty much succeeded in it too. So we knew we had to put a bit of money into getting a decent lens. So the first few videos of 2015 were shot using the standard zoom lens which came with the 700D camera. We then shot a couple of videos using a fixed 50mm prime lens but that thing was really cheap and it didn't have any stabilisation in the lens so all those videos are quite shaky. Go and watch bath time and you'll know what I'm talking about. And so because we loved our snap zooms we had to make sure we got a decent zoom lens with a nice wide aperture and also had that built-in stabilization that we needed and what an investment it was because this camera body and lens was pretty much used for 90% of the videos that you can find on the Patanaki channel. I don't think I actually retired this camera until at least well into 2018. So this guy shot all the Patanaki sketches that you know and love. It shot the first four seasons of the 12 games of Christmas and basically anything worth talking about from 2015, 16, 17 and 18. So this guy right here is the real workhorse. I shot my first ever wedding using this camera in 2016. I filmed a ton of different promotional projects for different companies using this very camera and lens setup. So it was actually the first ever camera which I used to make money from. 
So during 2017 and 2018, I started doing some more promotional shoots and I started working alongside a photographer friend of mine and he primarily shot using Olympus cameras because he was a brand ambassador for them. And so I got my hands on some of these Olympus cameras and started using them for that kind of work and for shooting my first real line of paid weddings. Unfortunately, I don't have these anymore to show you. But one of the main things that I loved about using these cameras was they were the first cameras I'd ever used that had in-body stabilization. So rather than relying on the lens to stabilize the footage, the stabilizer was inside the camera body itself. So you could put any lens on there that you wanted and the footage would be nice and smooth. And so it was because of this feature that I started dabbling with fully manual vintage lenses. So these are lenses that would have been used in the 50s, 60s and 70s that were completely manual. So that's manual focus and manual aperture. And I would buy specific adapters so that I could use these on the Olympus cameras. And these lenses would give a really cool, hazy sort of vintage effect. I even started buying cheap CCTV camera lenses and adapting them onto the body of the camera. But these lenses are super heavy, super clunky, and I had to carry around a ton of them in my bag. And then I'd keep switching them all day whilst filming weddings. And it was just not worth the hassle. And so that's why I started using a really minimal strip back approach when filming weddings. So in early 2019, I took the leap from the micro four thirds sensor size, which is what the Olympus cameras had, and I moved up to the big boy leagues of full frame sensors with the Sony cameras. So this right here is the first Sony body which I bought. This is the Sony A7. As you can see, it's a lot smaller and lighter than the body of something like that Canon 700D that we just looked at. So I bought this one for cheap just to get used to using the the Sony cameras and didn't really film that much on this guy. So rather than going through all the different camera setups that I've used for filming weddings, I'll just tell you the one which I use right now, which is the setup that I've used the most and will continue to use in the future. So the main camera which I hold myself, which I shoot 90% of the day on, is a Sony A7 Mark III, which is the camera which I'm shooting on right now. It's a 4K capable mirrorless uh, DSLR camera and the lens which I use all day on that camera is this fully manual Voigtlander 75mm 1.8. So this guy's got a super wide aperture. It's got a completely manual exposure and manual focus ring and was actually built to fit more expensive Leica cameras. So I use this adapter in order to attach it to my Sony a7 III and it gives off a really, really nice image. And I don't change that lens all day. So 90% of the footage that you see in my films is from that camera and that lens. Then when it comes to the ceremony, I'll also have two backup cameras. This is a pair of Sony A7S cameras. Unfortunately, these guys don't shoot 4K, but they shoot really nice 1080p. And the upside to these cameras is that there was actually a hack made available so that you could bypass the 30 minute recording limit. So both of these cameras actually film until the battery dies or until the memory card is full, which is perfect for filming weddings. So I can just press record and leave them running and know that they're gonna capture everything. So one of these A7S cameras will have a wide 24 millimeter lens on it. And then the other A7S I will again leave on a tripod, but I will use a Sony 55 millimeter lens, which is a lot tighter than that wide 24 millimeter. So I'll use this to get a little bit closer on the bride and groom. And then I'll of course be hand holding the Sony A7 III with that Voigtlander 75 millimeter on it, capturing the real close-ups of the bride and groom and all the main stuff that's happening. So that is my super simple three camera setup when filming ceremonies and speeches. But again, for the rest of the day, it's literally me just carrying around that one Sony A7 III and the one lens. So one of these Sony A7S's with the 24 millimeter is also what I like to call the gaming camera because it is the setup that we now primarily use to shoot the 12 games of Christmas and summer games and any other video game related videos that we shoot. It's able to bypass that 30 minute record limit so we can record those episodes of 12 games that can sometimes go past the hour mark. But the main camera which I now use for work and for, well, 
everything else is the Sony a7 III. So there you have it. That was just a nice little bit of show and tell, just showing off all the cameras which I own, which I use currently or I've used in the past, or they're simply just for display purposes. I just wanted to let you have a look at them whilst I have them out of storage. This has been another episode of Coffee and Nostalgia. I hope you've enjoyed this show and tell, and I will see you again next time.